I'm United States Senator John Barrasso, and this is The Elephant in the Room. Welcome to The Elephant in the Room. I'm your host, Cyrus Pearson, and I'm joined by my co-host, Christy. Christy, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me, Cyrus. We are taping from an office on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C., but who are we and what are we doing here? Well, I've been a Capitol Hill staffer for 22 years, specializing in video production, and have had the honor of working with every single Republican senator over that period. Christy tracks policy more than the NFL pays attention to next-gen stats. Together, our goal is to bring you conversations with actual members of the United States Senate, not a bunch of talking points you can hear anywhere else. This is our first ever podcast, and our very first guest is the man responsible for giving us the green light to launch. That's right, he's not only a senator, he's our boss. And yes, that is intimidating. He is the senior U.S. senator from Wyoming. He knows what he's talking about. He's been up here since 2007. He's essential. He's the third ranking member in Senate Republican leadership, and he's an orthopedic surgeon who attended both Georgetown and Yale Medical School. Please welcome the man known as Wyoming's doctor, U.S. Senator John Barrasso. Well, it's great to be with you, and I'm excited about this new format to share some things from uh, each of the members of the Senate about their lives and what uh, we think we bring uh, in a unique way to the United States Senate. Uh, from your background, uh, when people Google me, uh, they say that I'm a rodeo doctor. I also got uh, started as a radio doctor. So I've done really? both in Wyoming, and uh, part of it is doing health reports as an orthopedic surgeon. And I talk about things of people's interests, say great things like, you know, don't pick your nose, it might bleed. And I always sign off by saying, here in Wyoming, I'm Dr. John Barrasso, helping you care for yourself. Because it's about people giving health, giving information that they can use to stay healthy, to keep down the cost uh, of their disease. And as part of my practice as an orthopedic surgeon in, in Wyoming, uh, we have big rodeos in all the communities of the state. It is a yeah. big part of our heritage, our history. And um, Teddy Roosevelt actually came to Frontier Days when he was president of the United States in Cheyenne, the daddy of them all. And it continues to be a draw today. Wow. Well, that, that kind of goes into our first question, because uh, when people heard you were going to be on here, that's the one thing that kept coming up. You were a rodeo physician for the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association, and you volunteered as a team physician for Casper College, as well as several local high schools. So what's the story here? Do you love rodeo, broken bones? Do you just have an intolerance for taking time off? What's the story? Well, it's uh, the local high school kids. It's truly really great to be out there on the sidelines with them, cheering them on, making sure that if... Uh, you know, if something gets injured, you can, you know, get them off safely, get them good treatment, get it early, um, prevent additional injury. And, uh, you know, rodeo, they're all young. Uh, they all believe that they can go on forever, independent, resilient, self-reliant. And um, it's, it's interesting if you go to a rodeo, you can almost tell what event people are in by their size because the bull riders, uh, you know, shorts like jockeys, and they got to okay. be able to stay on there to not get thrown off. The same thing with a the bucking Broncos, and then you have the steer wrestlers, who are big guys like you, who ride a horse, jump off, grab the bull by the horns, if you will, and and then flip it over. So it's uh, uh, and they actually have high school teams. It, it, this is an event in high school. You they, can they, do. They, yeah, they have high school rodeos, we have college rodeos, and national finals co college rodeo that we host each year in Wyoming. The, the community colleges have rodeo teams, How? and a lot of people in the East or West Coast don't get it. They right. don't understand the Rocky Mountain West, and that's why in the United States Senate, there are so many of us from the Rocky Mountain West who want to come here, and they say, what do you, you know, what's the job? And it's to make sure Washington understands Wyoming and the Rocky Mountain West. People at home don't, don't have no interest in understanding Washington. We need to make sure Washington understands us. I have to say, if you brought a bull to the Senate floor and wrestled it, that would certainly set the tone, sir. Well, the issue is, you know, it's interesting. We have a, I have a picture of Teddy Roosevelt, and I had a bunch of kids in the office today showing it at Frontier Days. When Teddy Roosevelt was there in 1903, they didn't actually have bull riding. Sorry. They had buffalo riding. And the picture is really? Teddy Roosevelt watching a buffalo being ridden. And the, basically too many cowboys were getting hurt, so they tamed it down, and they went from buffalo riding to bull riding, <laughs> which is what we have today. They actually wow. had buffalo riding as an event. Wow. I did not know that. Learned well, there's a lot you can learn by listening yeah. to the elephant in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, let's talk about the people of Wyoming, and then we'll get into some stuff that you do on the day-to-day -day here. 
they just seem, you know, you talk about the coast and, and uh, Washington, D.C. And, and maybe New York. What's different about the people in Wyoming than the people, and I know we're stereotyping, that you might run into out here? You know, we have a, a cowboy code. It's a state code. And it says, uh, live each day with courage, take pride in your work, do what needs to be done. And that's what I see all around the state of Wyoming in small communities, with volunteers, with people committed to things. I talked about it at the Wyoming legislature last week when I go overseas and I go every Thanksgiving to visit our Wyoming troops overseas. Um, I, we talk about the cowboy code and I give each of them a challenge coin, which is a military coin, a sign of honor and recognition and respect. And on it, I have the cowboy. And it's a picture of the cowboy, the bucking bronco, the iconic figure of Wyoming with the, with the cowboy and the rider and, and on the horse. And it's because cowboys never quit and cowboys never complain. And I say, and neither, of course, will our military, the people that put themselves on the line each day to keep us safe, to keep us free. And I do the same with our first responders, with our uh, folks who are part of law enforcement in the state of Wyoming. I mean, people get up go to work, they work hard, come home at the end of the day, uh, and uh, give you a hard day's work uh, for a fair wage. What do you get out of it, out of going every Thanksgiving and volunteering and talking to the, the, the Wyomingites who are serving? Yeah, well, my, my dad was in World War II. He was in the Battle of the Bulge. Uh, came home, didn't talk about it very much. When I saw his discharge papers, I saw that he had signed up for uh, World War II three days after Pearl Harbor, wow. and he didn't come home until the war was over, which wow. was so many of them. This, uh -huh. you know, and uh, five bronze stars that he earned for, and during the Battle of the Bulge, the uh, you know, Medal for the Liberation of France. I mean, it, it's an astonishing history. And my wife's dad, uh, Bob Brown, again, didn't really talk about it much, was in World War II, part of the occupation of Japan, and then he was recalled to go to Korea. And it wasn't until after he passed, and I read his discharge from papers, and I saw he had been awarded the Purple Heart for being shot in Korea. Wow. And so it's as a, so it is in our it is part of who we are my family and from the time I was a little kid my dad would always say John you should thank God every day you live in America you don't know how fortunate you are and I do count those blessings every day and it's just my first year in the Senate uh, John McCain was then running for president 2007 mm -hmm. and there were a group five of us that went to Iraq during the surge into Baghdad the corkscrew landing. Uh, we actually went and saw John McCain's son, who is out in, uh, in, in an area outside of Baghdad. We okay. had Thanksgiving dinner with him. He had to go out with helicopters, with uh, machine guns mounted, ready. To, I mean, this was, a, this was a tough time in, wow. uh, in, in Iraq. And I just said, I got to go every Thanksgiving from here on in. And I have to see Wyoming soldiers, because there were about six soldiers from Wyoming who were there that night. Had Thanksgiving dinner with them. And they were a long way from home. This year went to... Uh, uh, into Okinawa, Japan, which is about a three-hour flight south of Tokyo. They're eyeball to eyeball with uh, with China, and uh, went to see 15 members of the Wyoming military there and spent Thanksgiving with them. And just to, they want to talk about home. They don't want to talk about what their job is every right. day. They want to talk about hunting season in Wyoming, how the Wyoming football team is doing, uh, you know, what's happening in their home communities, and when I had been in each of their home communities last. There's so much to talk about. And, Christy, I'll give you a, a second here sure. in, in a second. But, uh, Senator, our listeners, some of them may think we elect officials. They come up here. They go home. That's it. There's actually a lot of travel. I mean, you firsthand get to see what's going on around the country and the world. And uh, you, you do that as, as a senator, and, as, and you do it at home, too. Uh, I get home every weekend to Wyoming. And as we joke, not always to my own home, but but home to the state, because it's a big state. You know, right. by, uh, huge. You could put. Uh, I mean, we have counties that are bigger than the state of Connecticut or Rhode Island uh, or Delaware, and you know, communities are far apart. We don't have that many people; only half a million people, but a hundred thousand square mile. So, on average, that's only five people wow. per square mile. And um, they like when you show up, and I like to show up at events. So whether it's a Boy Scout. Court of Honor for some scouts becoming Eagle Scouts. Uh, last weekend was at the, uh, uh, the Wyoming Farm Bureau's Young Farmers and Ranchers Conference, went to a retirement party for a member of a county commission uh, who had served for you know, over a dozen years, great long history, families in, in the state of Wyoming. So I, I travel extensively. When we're not in uh, session during the, during the week, I go to schools and small communities and uh, Boys and Girls Club openings, just diff different things you where you can go, um, you know, Rotary Club, Kiwanis Club, service clubs, 
Uh, been to several of those in the last two weeks as well. Maybe that's why you're in such great shape. Uh, Christy, do you want to jump in and talk about some of the day-to-day work uh, going on up here? Sure. Well, I, I think that we're, we were digging through some exit poll data following this past election, looking at what were the issues that people were voting on, was it? And by and large, it, it seems like there was a security theme. It was economic security. It was national security. It was safety in communities, a different type of security. So looking at some of those uh, issues that people were focused on at home, and when you think about issues that people are focused at home on Wyoming, and you come back to the Senate for the 118th Congress, what are you thinking about right now for the priorities that you have and you're discussing? Yeah, I mean, the things I hear about at home, number one is inflation, the cost of things, the cost of groceries. Now, last year, it was the cost of, of gas and groceries. Mm-hmm. Uh, gas prices are down a bit because Joe Biden released a million barrels of oil per day from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, from our emergency reserves of energy. And we have legislation um, about specifically that, that if they're going to release this energy, they need to have a plan to to develop more energy, to use more energy. Wyoming is an energy breadbasket of the nation. We ought to be f- refilling the petroleum reserve. We ought to be producing American energy. We have, uh, you know, Joe Biden has taken us from energy security and independence to energy dependence. And as a nation, we're better, and we get this in Wyoming, we're better selling energy to our friends than having to buy it from our enemies. And the people of Wyoming hate the idea that, that Biden goes and begs Iran or Venezuela or Saudi Arabia to produce energy when we know that we do it much better. You come to Wyoming, you see beautiful landscape, beautiful places, because we are the best stewards of the land and we do it in a very clean and respectful way through the energy we develop. People in Wyoming are furious with with the travesty of what's happening at the southern border. You have what, two million illegal immigrants coming across the border this year, which is to your point, Christy, about security. That is a national security threat. Mm-hmm. You know, if you don't have energy security, you don't have border security. Um, th- those are parts of our freedom to have a have a, a solid border, to have affordable energy. Th- those are big parts of it. You know, the crime in the cities. You hear so much about that. It is less of an issue um, in Wyoming, but costs, inflation. Then what I continue to hear is the government spending too much money wasting money, adding to the debt. Mm-hmm. And what Joe Biden has done in the last two years uh, just flies in the face of what most people of Wyoming who live within our means in our state, we balance our budget every year and are very much opposed to the waste and abuse and the fraud that we see coming out of Washington. Senator, if I can jump off of that, uh, you, you talked about the amount of people crossing the border and Christy actually sent out uh, a study on an email that 55% of Americans, so over half of America, believes less than 500,000 people have crossed the border. So, I mean, we talk about it and see it all the time, but over half of America doesn't even realize how big a problem it is. And you've been down there personally. That's another place you've traveled. Been there a number of times at the border and in Texas and in Arizona. And to see this, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a national security massive problem. And the, the numbers are so overwhelmingly that people can't kind of grasp the fact that it's They're two huge. million illegal immigrants. You know, the, the number of, of, a, of 100,000, the number of people that in the United States have been killed, died from drug overdoses. So much of that is fentanyl. Much of it's coming illegally across the border. Uh, the, uh, you know, the cartels, the drug cartels, the smuggling cartels are just running rampant across the border. And Joe Biden and the Democrats seem to welcome it. I mean, the vice president at one point when she was running for president, said she wanted to eliminate immigrations and custom enforcement, which, you know, for most people in Wyoming, that, that just makes no sense. And that's, that's saying, well, we don't have, if you don't have a border, you know, you don't have a country and you want to protect your freedoms and your rights and your, as we do as, um, as Americans, uh, Joe Biden has undermined so much of what many of the American people believe is fair and just about this country. We were talking just beforehand, and I, n- I know your, your time is limited here. What was it, Christy, four and a half million people in the last two years, possibly? Yeah, so in 2021 and 2022 calendar year, it's over, yes, it's over, I believe it's over 4.5 million people have uh, illegally crossed the border. And actually, I, I went and looked back really quick, and between 2013 and 2020, if you add together all the border crossings in that seven-year time frame, that gets you 4.5 million. So it, we achieved in two years what happened in seven under Joe Biden. Wow. And if, and if our listeners want some perspective on that, 25 of the states have a population less than uh, about four and a half million people. So that's it's huge. Um, Senator, uh, like I said, I, I know your time's limited. 
you are very important in energy. You are the ranking member of the Senate Energy Committee. Let me ask you something about the future of energy because you're so uniquely uh, positioned to answer this. Maybe in the immediate future, but also 20 or 50 years down the line, and hopefully everybody realizes how important energy is, um, what is where, where are we going and where should we go with energy? I've heard about hydrogen, nuclear fusion, uh, nuclear, electric, gas, and oil, obviously. We need it all. Okay. Because the demands of a modern world need more and more energy. And we need to make energy as clean as we can, as fast as we can, without raising costs for American families. What people need is energy that is affordable, available, and reliable. And the fights with this administration and their future view is it all has to be renewable regardless of the cost and regardless of the consequences. And that's where I draw the line with the administration where I think they're wrong because we need it all. There's going to continue to be advances in technology. Uh, in the University of Wyoming, we have a school of energy resources focused on carbon capture, sequestration for people that are focused there. We have, we're building a next generation nuclear power plant, which is zero carbon. We need it all. You can't do it. Well, you can't power this country, the economy, our military, without the oil, the gas, and the coal that we continue to need. And Wyoming is the energy breadbasket of the country. We have it all, and we do it well. We, pr we produce it well, and we need to continue to be able to do that. All right, let's uh, shift focus a, a little back before you leave. Uh, maybe our listeners are listening and think, wow, this guy's great. I have a Jones in to go visit Wyoming. Uh, what could somebody expect if they took a vacation out there? Best vacation of their life. Really? The, uh, if they love the winter, we have the best skiing in the world at uh, Jackson Hole Mountain Resort with great oh, skiing yeah. in, in Jackson Hole, skiing around the state, but that's the, the number one destination. In the summer, we have incredible national parks, the Yellowstone and Grand Teton National Park, uh, rodeos, fairs uh, all around the state during the summer, beautiful landscapes, wonderful places. If you want to just go out and hike, canoe, fish, any of those things, uh, you can do them if you like outdoor sports. There's nothing like it in the world. Uh, big rodeo in Cheyenne, the daddy of them all, frontier days. You know, you can go to Cody, Jackson, Casper, Sheridan, name, name a town. They have a great rodeo. Uh, in Wyoming. There's a lot to see. Uh, we, uh, we welcome tourists and uh, you can camp, hike, stay in luxurious hotels if you want. You have the whole gamut of, of what you'd like. You're going to find it in, in Wyoming. Well, Senator, I want to thank you so much for being so generous with your time today. I know you have something else to run off to. And we have so many questions, and they are so random. Uh, but we just chose a few. And uh, if you have a chance in the future and this works out, we'd love to have you back on. Well, it's always a pleasure to be here with you guys, and thanks for allowing me to be the elephant in the room. Of course, thank you for being the first one. And if you'd like to hear interviews with all the other Republicans running things up here in the U.S. Senate, please subscribe to our podcast so you can be notified when a new episode drops. It's just a little button. Don't be scared to push it. We're not going to ask you for any money, I promise. We're on SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple, YouTube, everywhere you'd want to get your listening fix on. Thank you for your attention today, and we'll see you next time on The Elephant in the Room.